Hi, this is Chris with Jai Crispy Consulting, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make some documentation using Sandcastle and the Sandcastle Help File Builder. So to get started, uh, I went to the Sandcastle Help File Builder page, and you can get to that at uh, shfb, Sandcastle Help File Builder, uh, dot codeplex dot com. When you get to there, you can see uh, some information about it as well as the installation instructions. I've already opened those up. The things that you're going to need are the download for the Sandcastle Help File Builder itself, uh, .NET Framework 3.5 SP1, and the latest version of Sandcastle. So you will need to go and download Sandcastle separately and install that. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and install the Sandcastle Help File Builder and you'll be ready to start making some documentation. Now, I've already done that and I've gone into Visual Studio and created a very very simple uh, class library just a sort of four function calculator. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is create some documentation. Now within Visual Studio you have uh, XML documentation and you can get to that by just putting in three slashes if you're in C Sharp. There's also a handy tool that I sometimes use called Ghost Doc. Using Ghost Doc, if you have that Visual Studio add-in installed, uh, you can just right-click on a method or a class and say document this, and it will not only put in the, the basic parameters that you might want to document, but it'll also fill it out with some text based off your, your method name and things like that. So it can be a little bit of a time saver, so that's a nice tool to use. So let me just go through and create some documentation for this really quickly. Okay, so now I've created some very basic documentation. And now that I have this additional documentation, I'd like it to be included with my project. So the way I can do that is I'm going to go to my class library project, right click, go down to properties, and under the build, down at the bottom with output, you'll see there's an XML documentation file. So I'll just check that, and I'll leave the default of where it wants to put it. That's fine for me. Uh, one thing to note is you can make this uh, different based on your, your configuration. So if you want it to only create the documentation file when you're doing a release build as opposed to a debug, you can do that. So I'll save that change and I'll build my project. And now if I navigate into that directory, there's my bin, debug, and here we go. Here's my four function calc XML document that represents that documentation. So if I open that up, so you can see that all of the information that I put in is available in this XML document, but it's not in a very user-friendly format. And that's where Sandcastle helps us. It will take this information along with some of the information from our actual code using reflection on the DLL uh, in order to generate really nice documentation for us. Now Sandcastle you can use by itself, uh, but since it's a command line program, the Sandcastle help file builder gets, gives us a nice interface to set the parameters and the properties um, for our build output. So I'll show you that now. So I can close this XML document down and I'll go launch the Sandcastle help file builder. Okay, so here's my Sandcastle help file builder uh, GUI. The first thing I want to do is I want to create a new documentation project. I'm just going to navigate to put my documentation project in with my actual code project. So I'll put it right here. I'll create a new directory. And you don't have to name it this or put it in this location. It's just the convention that I find most useful. And I'll just call this calc docs. And now I get a window where I can specify all of the parameters that I want for my documentation. I can add in things like titles, uh, copyrights, footers, all sorts of information as well as provide uh, summaries for the namespaces itself. And the first thing I want to do is I want to give it what my documentation source is. So I'm going to right click and say add documentation source. And I'm going to navigate to where my DLL is. Select that and say open. And you'll see that it also automatically brought in not just the DLL but that XML file that I'd created. So right now that's all of the information that we want to document. That's all of our sources. So now I can go through and I can specify some of the parameters for how I want it to create my documentation. So the first thing I'm going to change is my framework. I'm using 
4. And then I'm going to change my help file format. You can change this to whatever suits you. Uh, for these demos, I'm going to use a website project. And you can, I don't know if you noticed that, but you can output uh, multiple uh, documentation types. So you could do HTML help one and a website, uh, whatever combination you would like. I'm going to leave the rest of these defaults, and then I'm going to go down to namespace summaries. And that will look up all of the namespaces that it finds in all of the documentation sources that I've provided. So I'll just give it a summary, and I'll close that. I can also provide a project summary, so if I want to just give a overall description of what's going on for the project. And then there's a lot of options here, so I'm definitely not going to go through them all. Um, I'm not going to change anything in help file or these areas. Uh, path is important to just note. Um, I usually leave this the default, but you can change it to whatever you like. But this is where all of your documentation is going to actually be built to. So when you're done building your documentation project, that's where you can go to actually find the documentation that's been generated. There is an API filter down here. So if you don't want to include everything, you can remove some unwanted sections of your code, things that you don't feel need to be documented. Uh, and you have a lot of choices here. Um, I'm going to leave it at the default for now. And maybe I will change the help title. So that should be enough to give us an idea of the capabilities. So I'll save and build my project. Now the build can sometimes be a little time consuming, especially if you're going against a very large sort of production solution. It won't be too bad with this because it's such a small uh, class library. But something to keep in mind, uh, if you do have a very large project, uh, you might want to start this and go get yourself a cup of coffee or something. Okay, so the build is done. You can see down at the bottom here that the build completed. So now let's go take a look at what we got. Went into that documentation folder. Uh, so here's my documentation project. And here's the help folder that it built. And you can see it created a bunch of files. So what I want to do to get to the uh, basic root of my website is go to index. I'll open that up. Uh, because I'm running it locally, I'm getting one of these IE protect your security things. So I'll just allow the block content. And then I can see it how it was meant to be seen. And you can see here's a uh, basic documentation in a much more user-friendly format than the XML document. So we can see here's the simple summary I created for the namespace. I can expand this out and see my class and all of the members that are created. And this works the same way um, if you're doing a web application project. Uh, exact same thing when you go into your, your project uh, properties, you can go into the build menu and select to output an XML file. The one thing that is different are websites uh, because those don't compile down into a single assembly. Uh, there's a little bit of special precautions you need to take and some extra steps. So I'll show you how to do that in a future video. But for now, I hope that this was useful and that you can now create some beautiful documentation.